So oftentimes with much of this social media, the best example to really, uh, or the best way to understand how things work is via examples and such. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show then this particular client that has uh, an Instagram account that we have set up for him, for the owner of the restaurant. This is this one that I've mentioned before, this um, Mexican food restaurant. Uh, aquí es Texcoco, and you can actually see this on the web. The thing about Instagram is that there are aspects of it that you can access via the web, but the most important aspects you cannot. You have to use an app. Most important aspect, for example, is um, is uh, publishing or posting to Instagram. Uh, yeah, it needs to go back there. Uh, so if you want to post to Instagram, you definitely need an app, either on your iPhone, Android phone, Windows phone, you need the app. And it could be a smartphone or it could be a tablet, so I mentioned this last week. And the thing is that eventually, well, in the beginning, they didn't have any web presence. It was all just in the app. And now they do have a web presence with some ability, such as being able to view pictures. So here, let me show you then an example of this client. On your regular web browser, on your computer, if you'd like to, you can go to instagram.com slash aquí es Texcoco, like that, and you will see their web profile. There are various stats, just like every other social network. You've got posts you've got followers, you've got following, very similar to Twitter. Yes? Do you have a Wi-Fi account? Yes. If you want to get into our Wi-Fi, you should see a network floating around called NCC Wireless. And then once you see that, you want to use the password CE Fall 2015. CE Fall 2015. So if you take a look, this profile seems similar to, let's say, Twitter or just about every other network. There's a logo of the company, the name, little biographical information, a link in the biography and some stats, and then the content. Well, that's very similar to every other social network. And the main content of Instagram is pictures. Well, that's very similar to Pinterest. When we talked about Pinterest, we spent a lot of time uploading pictures and such. But here, Instagram, when it was founded in 2012 or 13, around there, um, the main idea was it that you would be able to instantly share photographs. You would take a photo on your smartphone. In the beginning, it was iPhone only. So for like, a, I think about a year, it was iPhone only. If you had an Android phone, Windows phone, any other type of phone besides an Android, uh, besides an iPhone, you could not access Instagram. And then eventually, Android people got the opportunity to, to get on Instagram and Windows phone and, and so forth. And now it's got actually more users than Twitter. Twitter has around 300... 15 million users worldwide, so 315 million worldwide, and Instagram just announced that they reached about 400 million uh, within the last month. And obviously that's in big part of be because of their parent company. Does anyone know Instagram's parent company? Facebook. Facebook bought Instagram a few years ago for a few billion dollars, literally. They paid I don't know, $1 billion? I don't remember how much, but they paid at least $1 billion for Instagram. And when they bought it, it had less than 100 million users. That was about two years ago or so. And now two years later or so, it's got 400 million. So with such a deep integration of Facebook with Instagram, no doubt they got more people to get on Instagram. When that happened, there was a lot of consternation because Instagram was sort of like in the very beginning, it was so exclusionary, wasn't it? iPhone only. And then eventually Android people. But then, after that, the whole masses of Facebook had a chance to, to use it. And so it's, had, it's sort of had like an exclusionary cachet for a long time. 
Um, and for the people that were using it in the beginning that valued that exclusivity, it was a big shock that suddenly the biggest tech company in the world was going to buy this little startup and uh, change it, as they often do. And for a long time, actually, they really have not changed it. They have not changed the core functionality and the features of, of Instagram, which is great for everyone. One thing that has changed very recently in the past couple of weeks, actually, however, is that now ads are going to start to come into Instagram. So for a user, that's terrible, because now my beloved Instagram that was always cool and interesting now is going to get ads, just like everything else. But as, as marketers, as companies, that's good, isn't it? Because we can potentially reach an audience that really cares about our product. So just like any other uh, social network, we can use it as an, on a personal level or on a business level. And on a business level, the integration of Facebook with Instagram is great. And on a business level, the, the, new, the new additions of, of, of boosting posts and such is, is also good for business. And if it can be done in a, in a good way, then it's also, it'll also be good for customers, for clients, for users of the service. And so the only thing we can really do on Instagram.com is log in, but that assumes you have already an account. And you cannot create an account on the website. And I can't click and create an account anywhere. I have to log in, which assumes you've got an account already set up on iPhone, Android, or Windows Phone. We'll do that in a moment. But here's some examples, real-world examples of this client. So we've got 370 followers. So far, we've posted 22 pictures. For a long time, the style of Instagram photos were where they were square. We're used to horizontal pictures or maybe tall pictures. But Instagram was different because you could only upload square pictures. And so that gave it a certain um, style compared to the other uh, graphics networks like Flickr, Pinterest, etc. Unfortunately, personally, I don't like that. Very recently also, they now allow people to put non-square pictures. And I'm thinking, well, the square picture was one of the defining factors of the service. Why do they, why did they need to change that defining factor? So I don't like that you can now put pictures that are not square. I like the original square format. And in the beginning, Instagram was only pictures. But actually, you can also upload videos. So like there's a video right here. The thing about Instagram uh, video is that it is limited to 15 seconds. You cannot upload a five minute instructional video or a one minute video. You can only upload 15 seconds. And you might think, that is such a tiny amount of time, how can I possibly get my message across? Well, think about the commercials you see or hear on TV or the radio. Uh, they're usually not five long, five minute long epics. Less and less, they're one minute long. Many times you're seeing 30 second commercials, maybe even 15 second, 20 second. So basically short commercials in the real world. And so what Instagram did was allowed to add video and not the epic long videos like of YouTube. These are going to be 15 seconds. And this is a viable form of marketing also. Within 15 seconds, we can see a lot of interesting things. Let's see here. Because everyone's on Instagram, let's check out McDonald's. McDonald's. Instagram.com slash McDonald's. So they have nearly 1 million followers on Instagram. Square photos. Uh, none of these look like video. There's a video right here. Let's check out that one. Doesn't appear to have any sound, but it's just a little animation, uh, a little video of friends drinking a drink together. See this one. Let's 
so eating it, eating a cookie or more. Okay, so I'm definitely seeing a style to these photos of McDonald's on Instagram. Oftentimes they have some sort of pastel um, construction paper behind the scene. I like that it's educational too because you know that line that's like the uh, chicken nuggets is supposed to be the is active, and mm -hmm. so they had uh, a little note there about Yeah, shooting stars. Yeah, shooting stars. Um, yeah, there's so much that you can do with... For password, chicken nuggets, and the hashtag is per se. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that you can do uh, to tap into various concepts, just like any social network, Twitter, Facebook. Here it's focused much more on pictures, and you can do video as well. Just your limitation is 15 seconds. And so it's a, always a good idea to look at other companies uh, to see what they're doing on any particular social network. Uh, obviously that there takes a lot of effort with uh, filling in the ketchup cups. What's that? So people will be able to... Mm -hmm. Did you see that? Okay. No, I just. Comments are really interesting. Well, that's the that's that's the issue that comments, just like any social network, can be positive or negative, and then so what? At least what we have on Instagram is that we will be able to delete negative comments, unlike let's say Twitter, where if someone tweets something ne negatively, there's I can't do anything with it. it. It's there for everyone to see, but if someone posts something negative on my Instagram account, I can delete it. We'll see how to do that. But this is a way you can control your message and have it the, be the most uh, positive if you'd like. So on this particular client, we have different shots of the food because they're a restaurant, of course. If there is a particular event, there's a few shots of that. So notice this one here. They, they were at the Taste of LA and just different shots of the venue and the food. And so the Sridacha festival and everything different kinds of photos. It's up to you to put whatever you'd like, of course. Uh, here's another example. Everyone, I'm just working on my app, an HTML5 app. It uses jQuery and jQuery Mobile. It is semantic HTML5. Like, well, something like this. Everyone, I'm just working on my app, an HTML5. So this is on one of my uh, own Instagram accounts, uh, instagram.com slash the V-M-C-I-N-K. And so also pictures, there's a video there. We'll see how to record video. Um, it's similar to Vine. Has anyone used Vine before? If you haven't, it's another, it's another uh, social network based on video. The thing about Vine is that Vine videos are limited down to six seconds. So if you think 15 seconds is not enough to tell a story, you've got Vine videos in six seconds, and that's very popular. It's got some users that have three million followers. So people are really interested in, in multimedia content, pictures, video. That's why we're going to talk about YouTube next week, because uh, YouTube, uh, you might not quite think about it, but it's a very big social network. It's got hundreds of millions of users. By one metric, it could have also a billion users casual users, hardcore users, and so forth. So that's why we'll talk about YouTube next time. But we're looking at video as an ancillary aspect of Instagram. It's more about the photos, although you can do all video on Instagram. There's an account, which I forgot to look up, there's an account that they're telling a feature-length movie in 15 second, in 15 second increments. There's this movie that they shot right on their phone, and they're recording it, and then they're, they're putting 15 seconds at a time. And it's really interesting, because within those 15 seconds, you do get, in and of itself, those 15 seconds, a complete story. You can put that story out of context 15 seconds, and it works. And if you follow it every week or every day, whatever, when they post a new episode, you're getting this complete narrative of, you know, an hour-long movie 15 seconds at a time.
This particular account here has just got some random photos of technology and other such things. But do you also notice that the character, oftentimes, of the of the photos, um, it really depends on the account, and you'll you'll often notice that there are filters on the photos that they don't look like a plain classic well shot kind of photo. They often have some sort of filter that maybe makes it look overexposed or a little more red or just kind of different filters. This is also a part of the character of Instagram. That it, uh, in the beginning, they were focused on displaying photos in the classic Polaroid kind of style. Remember, Polaroids were could have been very finicky. They could be overexposed, they could be underexposed, there could be light streaks imperfect photos. So this company wanted to capture that because digital photography nowadays they felt was too perfect. You take a photo, it's exactly what you see, basically. And so they wanted to make a social network focused on square photos, photos that didn't look like the usual, that they were filtered, that they looked weird, that they looked interesting, that they looked unique. And that was the culture of Instagram, which is mostly still intact, but for example here on McDonald's they don't quite do that. They're doing a kind of, you know, well-shot photos, but focused still on the pastel colors. Here on Texcoco, this ranges. Some of them are traditional kinds of photos shot well, and others like this one. What's popular is photos that have a, that have a focus in an area. Notice there's the blur and then the focus. We can do all of that within the app. Take a photo, filter it, give it blur to make it look interesting. Because really with, let's say, Flickr or Pinterest, you take a photo, you upload it, and you're done. But Instagram also has the aspect of what's the interesting filter that works with it? Will it will look nice with a focus blur? And so forth. Here's one more. This one is my own personal Instagram for fun. Instagram.com slash vmcampos. Uh, take a variety of kinds of photos. Here's some drawings I made recently. Here's the rain. Usually I try to take a photo when there's rain and I'm putting it together in my long-term project, the San Diego rain project, because it doesn't happen that often and I want to document it. So I've got lots and lots of those photos, the blood moon. Um, so these are all basically photos I shot right on my phone. No, uh, most of them are on my phone. This one was on my real camera, my real Canon camera. Did you try a tripod? Mm -hmm. So you'll often see in my particular feed mostly rain photos when it happens and other things, like this shot here, for example. Also, this was at the beach, in Imperial Beach, and um, it's got this effect in this style of a, you know, sort of like a dreamy, faded photo. You can, of course, upload any kinds of photos that you want, but the style we'll see in Instagram, it, it presents you with a variety of filters that we can try. And you'll often see that you'll get an interesting photo with, with a filter. You can use Instagram directly from the phone and take photos, filter them, upload it, you're done. Sometimes people use a more powerful camera and it's a bunch of extra steps, but it would be taking a photo with your Canon camera or Nikon camera, for example, then processing it in Photoshop, and then uploading it. But you still cannot upload from the website. You still need to upload it from your app. So that requires that you take that photo from Photoshop and put it into your phone somehow. We can talk about various techniques, but uh, the same thing with video. You can shoot video. Like I've got a video right here. So this is only a few seconds to tell a story. And this is just an advertisement to go watch my YouTube video to see the whole video. So in six seconds, showing off a little video clip to entice people to go to my YouTube channel to watch the whole video. Now I did that in, in Windows Movie Maker, which we'll learn how to use next week. Question? I'm just, I'm just not sure. 
It's a slideshow. Yeah, it's a slideshow that I made in Windows Movie Maker, which we'll learn how to do next week. And then I, I transferred the video onto my phone, and then from my phone I uploaded it to Instagram, because we cannot upload from the website. And you can also do sound? With Windows Movie Maker, you can do slideshow, sound, transitions, cutting different clips together, all of that stuff. That's not built into Instagram. That's something we'll learn in Windows Movie Maker next week. Or iMovie. You can use iMovie as well. Uh, this particular video here, for example, I don't think I have sound on this one, but this one is actually, uh, I use this app called Hyperlapse. And Hyperlapse is a free app that you can download that you record a video and then it zooms it, it speeds it up for you. So I recorded this walking from the classroom at another campus to my car. And then I put it into Instagram and um, uploaded it to Instagram. So I made it in a different app, but then I uploaded it to my Instagram. Question? Just with your phone? This was all with my phone, yes. What's popular are also doing these sorts of collages. So I went to San Diego Comic Con and uh, I was looking around at the expensive comic books, and there's some expensive comic books there. So for example, Wonder Woman number two, you can buy it for the low price of $1,400. Or Captain America number something, which is beating up Hitler, for $1,100. Now, those are not the most expensive comics I saw there. I saw comics for $40,000. And I saw one comic for $100,000. But the point is this collage. I've got a shot of this Wonder Woman comic and Captain America and this one called this modern one, I Zombie, and myself. This is a collage that I put together. Um, we can do that as well on Instagram. So how many of you currently have an Instagram account? A couple of people. Okay, good. Now the thing about Instagram is that there's no, uh, there's no difference between the personal and the business, unlike other, uh, other networks. So in a moment we will create uh, an account, but hopefully you're seeing the range of, of photos. And uh, especially for mine, they're usually shot right on the phone and then a couple of tweaks and then uploaded. You're I don't doubt... This one? Yeah. No, I was on top of a bridge oh. looking down. Uh, McDonald's, I don't doubt that they have a professional studio set up with lights and professional food stylists and a professional camera and graphic designers and everything. And then they take the photos and then they use someone's iPhone in the company and then they upload to the official McDonald's account. With this client over here, it's usually straight from the phone. Um, some of these However, they do need a little bit of editing in Photoshop, like we put the, the watermark on the photo in Photoshop and then upload it through the phone. Those of you that do have an Instagram account, would any of you like to volunteer for me to put it up here and we can kind of show your photos and talk about them for a moment? So it's uh, uh, D-A-N-I-E-N-Y-E-N-Y-E-S-T-E-S. Oh, okay. So you, you haven't had it that long? No. I, I, I always had an account, but I didn't even know how to use it. And I had like a very uh, slow form, so I didn't really have time to do So it seems that you're you're shooting with your Canon or Nikon. No, see, Canon. I don't know how to take pictures with my phone. I'm starting learning. So I do. Those are my shots, and then I use Dropbox, and then I so I put on um, Instagram to Dropbox, mm -hmm. and also I use one that I have a lot of photographers friends, so we always exchange information. But uh, information, but um, I do use something that makes the Pictures square. Huh, Instagram will Insta do it directly. Insta so I don't need to make them square. On Insta size, you'll see like this way already. Huh. So
So uh, I see you've got 126 followers. Very good. So you're already using it pretty well. That's a very good goal right there. One of the things that, that I was going to say. So almost every day you're putting something. You've got 77 photos already. Good. So just like any other of these social networks, let me go back to your first photo right here. This shows that you updated 18 weeks ago. So you've only started to use... You've only started to use this, you know, 18 weeks ago or so, it seems. So, uh, yeah, a good idea is to... Oh, no. I can see. Oh, yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I do see that. Uh, okay, I see that. The very first one, 136 weeks ago, which is uh, two years. Yeah. <laughs> so... So then you, um, then you started it up again 21 weeks ago. Okay, so um, basically uploading something often. That's, that's the big thing. That's the big thing about all the social networks, being active. If you start a Twitter and use it a little bit for a couple of months or a couple of weeks and then give it up, well, then they'll be surprised that you don't get any followers, you don't get any activity and such. But if you use these social networks on a regular basis, along with every other technique we've talked about, liking other people's stuff, replying to other people's stuff, that will help. Are you doing any of that? Are you going to other people's photos too? I don't know um, how to do it, um, how to look for things that I like it. So you do this very basic thing. I just I follow someone and I like their thing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, anyone else maybe would like to show off their work? Okay. So, let me show you. Um, where did she change hers to? She changed it recently. I think it's No, that's not her. Uh, Yeah, I don't remember her, her name, so I can't quite show you hers. Uh, but, um, oh, sure. It's a business, C E L E N E S. C E S E S. Okay. So, also, you've got various posts. How long have you been using it? B O U T I Q. Okay, so that just shows actually um, these names are unique, just like Twitter, just like Pinterest, just like every network. If you wanted a specific name and it was taken, you'll have to use another name. But that's okay because here you've got a pretty good presence as well. 165 followers, biographical info, phone number, good, different photos. So how long has this account been open? Over five years. Mm -hmm. And is it updated often? Uh, try to do it daily. These, uh, this text and such, how do you put on your text? It's an uh, app that I use. Okay. So you see we can mix and match. Yeah. It's called what? A grid, app. grid. Okay, we can mix and match. We can use an app to write our text, and then we upload the photo through Instagram. So um, it's very open. I can record a video in my video app and do some tweaks and special effects on it, and then use Instagram to upload it. I can use many other photo uh, photo apps out there. A popular one is called Camera 360. I can take photos in Camera 360 then I can filter them, do different things, and then upload them on Instagram. And so on, on these, then I, I see that there's a lot of uh, built-in, so the, the pictures themselves stand out, and then there's also some, some text and emoji and such built-in um, interest, uh, not just the picture itself. So you see a variety of ways to, to handle the, um, the usage of Instagram. It's not just photos, it could be text, it could be video, borders, all of that stuff.
So an example, let's see another big company here. You could see Chipotle. Oh, this is not the Chipotle that I thought it was. Let's see another one, Nike. Okay, that's the Nike. So 25 million followers. And um, you see these stats when I roll over a picture, a heart, and a little speech bubble. Well, the heart are favorites. The heart is likes, just like any other network. So 802,000 likes, 802,000 favorites. And then 13,000 comments. So if you then click and then you see the comments, some of them are going to be very basic. Some of them are going to be more written out. But this is the, the, the social aspect of the social networks. So this obviously looks like it's a, a professionally shot commercial that then they uploaded to Instagram. In 15 seconds, you get this little movie. It's I don't think it's that slow. If you see the people, they're moving pretty normal speed. I think it's just the, the slowness of the camera movement, but not the action inside. Built into the app, I believe there are two speeds, a normal speed and a slow speed. Uh, if you want to do a fast speed, like the one I showed over here at uh, uh, In-N-Out Hamburgers, uh, I used a different... Uh, oh, I, I guess I didn't have it here. I had... Oh, no, it was this one right here. So if you wanted to do like a fast speed. That one was a separate app called Hyperlapse. So it's a free app if you want to look up Hyperlapse. Uh, it's actually uh, Microsoft Hyperlapse. Microsoft Hyperlapse. It's free for uh, iPhone, Android. It's also, you can download it for your computer. You can download the Hyperlapse software for your computer and you can put photo or video into the app and then it will create fast motion video. So it looks like to be it looks like it's pretty well received because here it's got 12,000 ratings, four stars. It has to be downloaded to cell phone. Which you can uh, you can do it. Uh, that might be the most direct way because if you shot your video on your phone and you've got the Hyperlapse app, then you can do it right here. But if you download the app to your computer, well, you have to download the video from your phone to the computer, use Hyperlapse, then put it back on your phone. So if you get it directly on your phone, then it's a faster process. Okay, so what we'll do is we will we will uh, create an account. If you don't have an account, I'll try to go through that process. If you, if you do have an account, you can just log in and then we'll, we'll talk in, in a moment. So I'm going to be projecting my, my cell phone screen here. And therefore, mine might look a little different than yours because everyone's phone is different. Uh, but I'm going to have my phone right there. And uh, you're going to want the... Um, the app, if you don't have it on your phone already, you're going to need to go to your app store. Is it free? Yes. Is it free? Yes. Um, you're going to need to go to your app store and search Instagram. If you would like to use our Wi Fi signal, Again, it's, um, let me write it up here again, if you want to use our Wi-Fi, it's um, NCC Wireless is the, is the wireless network that is floating around, and then the password for that is CE Fall 2015. It's not the best network, unfortunately. Uh, it's very slow for some reason, even though this is a new facility. 
So if you'd like to use your own AT&T or Verizon, whatever you got, you can do that. But I often see that I have terrible reception in here because of the too much glass and metal. And we're on the first floor. So maybe this wireless will work a little better. But the point is you need to you need to get the app. It's free. And um, so my phone is a Windows phone. What's cool is that we've got the official Instagram app, and we've also got this alternative app called Six Tag. You will most likely not get this six tag app unless you've got a Windows phone. But six tag, in, in most people's opinion, is way better than the official Instagram app. If you've got Android or iPhone, get the official Instagram app. Um, another one that's popular is called Hipstamatic. If you get Hipstamatic, that's another way to access Instagram. But Instagram is the official app. I'm going to show you the official app and then show you six tag just to, to see how it's different. But if you notice just on the star ratings, the official Instagram app has 10,000, uh, actually 100,000 ratings and it's four stars. Six tag has 136,000 ratings and four and a half stars. So the unofficial app has way better reviews than the official app. Sometimes that happens. But anyway, you need to if you don't have it yet, you need to download Instagram. Beta. Well, mine says beta, but like I said, my screen might look different than yours. You just want the Instagram app. Mm -hmm. So take a moment to download it, and we'll go on. Why does this ask you for an option? Um, well, I opened Google Play to get to it. Maybe that's fine. Okay, so the Instagram app is free, but you might just have to have your account properly set up on your phone. You should not need to pay for anything. So go ahead then and take a moment to download it. Call me if you have any trouble. Download it, and then you want to launch it, and then we'll talk about fully setting it up. Is there anything else we should download? The only thing we need right now is Instagram, but there's a whole world of other apps that might be useful. Like I said, Hyperlapse, um, Camera 360, but not required. The only one is Instagram. Having any trouble? Instapad on your iPad. On your pad, what you want to do, on your iPad, what you want to do is, when you search, tell it to show you all the apps, not just iPad apps, because it's, it's no it's like iPad, iPad, 
<laughs> well, yeah, that's that's fine. It means that's the rating. The rating is all ages, teen, age, oh, all so this is the teen, okay. Yeah. So then what's this job? Teen. You're, you're missing uh, a couple of things. You're missing your full setup on your profile. So um, we can't do this part. You have to wait to proceed. But uh, why are you going to work on that? It just said, um, I just need to uh, take the notes. You might not be able to proceed because it means that uh, it's like this. Uh, it's just you just need to have your account verified in case you're going to buy any of these later. But you can do remind me later. We can we'll see it later. We can see it later on the screen. Oh, well, maybe your eyes are going to be skipped. Did you scroll up? Oh, scroll yeah. down. I, I did skip. It's ready for two months now. 
it's oh, not yeah. a rating or something like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that they made the caps. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yours doesn't say that? No. Oh. I have two number mm -hmm. So. Plus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, the thing is to uh, download the app, of course, and then I've downloaded it. And for me, like I said, the the screens <coughs> might um, the screens might uh, look a little different. But on my screen, when I launch it the first time, it says register with Facebook because now Facebook is the parent company. Register via email or log in. So if you already got an Instagram account, obviously you log in. Now one of the problems with the official Instagram app is that you can only use one account at a time. Now I have my personal account and I manage a few other companies' accounts. So if I want to switch between my personal and the business account, I have to log out of my personal account and then log in to the business, which is really annoying. The official uh, app doesn't give a way to do that yet. And I, I doubt, I mean, I don't doubt they will eventually let you do that because they're integrating more business features, such as ads. But for the moment, you'll have to log out and log in. The alternative app that I mentioned, SixTag, that one has a feature to switch between accounts. But unfortunately, SixTag is not available for iPhone or Android. If you've got a Windows phone, then you have SixTag. And then so here, I'm going to register with an, with an email address. You can use Facebook if you like, but I would rather use a regular old email. So it's going to ask me, I'm creating my account, and it's asking I can add a photo at this point. I can then create a username, password, and an email. The username is that unique name when I showed on the website Instagram.com slash Nike. Instagram.com slash VM Campos. That is that username that only exists um, for one person in the world. So when you fill in this username, hopefully it's not taken. Oh, excuse me. Um, it's suggesting that where I put my email address, it's saying that this email is taken by another account. That seems to sound like you created an Instagram account before with an email and you forgot about it. You'll have to use another email address then. So I'm trying to create an account here, and I'm just going to make up something. So I chose a, a username, I added a uh, password and an email, and so it takes me to this next screen. Again, yours might look a little different, but in mine it's saying make it easy for friends to find you, so full name optional, phone number optional. You may or may not see that. It says no one will see your phone number on Instagram. Uh, so 
this is just like every other network, that if you make connections with people on your existing networks, you'll be able to um, have more followers and such. So this full name, which is optional, this is the name where I can, this is the spot where I can type my full name. And here's where I can use capital letters and spaces and exclamation points and all of that. On the username, I cannot. It has to be lowercase. It has to be no spaces. And that one is unique. Full name, I can put whatever I want here. I'm not going to put a phone number here. You can if you want to, and then I'll proceed. Have you created the account? I did. Well, you went a little shorter, so you're fine. My, my screen was there, but uh, if you didn't see it, that's fine. Well, yeah, you're fine. So it's asking you to create a phone number. I think that's the phone number. Again, the option, the phone number is optional. So you can put it or not. So No, like I said, my screen might look different than yours. So if I'd ask you for a phone number, good. If it didn't, good. So mine is saying, find Facebook friends to follow. I'm going to skip that. Yep, you have to add a password or else someone else could break into your account. And then it keeps saying, well, we'll find friends on Instagram. Let's take a break at this point just to make sure everyone managed to create the account. And once we've got the account created, we'll look at the anatomy, what are the different buttons and such, what do they do. It's 131, we'll be back at 141. And if you have any trouble setting this up, call me over.